to this week in lacrosse, presentation of lacrosse inside the game. My name is Gary Mark along with Ron Messer and Ron, we're almost there. Yeah, it's almost time Gary, the OLAC, OLA season is just around the corner. Yep. Uh, I read on all the fan forums on the internet lately, the Junior B camps are all in full swing. Yep. And I saw the Brooklyn Merchants, a local team here, Senior B Club, uh, announce their uh, uh, training schedule and the opening of their season at Norwood Nitro and please excuse me boys if I forget the date but it's uh, it's pretty soon. Uh, the Junior B season opens April the 17th I understand right. Gary and locally the Green Gales uh, home opener is April the 23rd versus Markham I believe. And keeping in line with the Junior B season uh, announcement that we're just putting on the website tonight actually uh, we are going to watch, I guess we've already announced it, but we're going to be, uh, Saturday, March 28th, there's an 18 mini tournament. I guess this happens, this is the second annual one in Six Nations at the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. Uh, eight teams involved, and I'll read them off here in a second. Uh, we're going to be there for the day. We're going to be broadcasting live over the internet uh, the Junior B games for that day. Yep. Uh, uh, not a bad deal at all. And uh, all you people across the province that can't travel to the nations to watch your uh, young heroes play, Tune in and uh, we'll try and bring you the action. Yep. And so the teams involved are Hamilton, Conewaki, Six Nations, Cornwall, Sarnia, Halton, Welland, and Oakville. Now, as of this going live or, or going on the website, and as of me posting the information tonight, uh, Welland has expressed an interest that they not be recorded. Um, so there's three games. Each one of these teams plays three games mm -hmm. in that day. So we're honoring that request. They've asked us to not broadcast their games. So we're honoring that. So of the three games that they are involved with, we will not be broadcasting, but all other nine games, we will be there. It'll be a fairly long day, but you know, for those lacrosse crazed people out there like you and I, um, what, they, they got like a big, big secret weapon or something <laughs> they want to hide from the public? You know, you know what, I don't know. Oh, I, well. I just know that the discussions have gone on and they've yeah. expressed an interest that they don't want to be uh, recorded, they don't want to be broadcast. So you know what, right. that's fine, we're going we're gonna to honor that and uh, yeah. you know, um, I'll still be there watching them and, and hopefully oh, hell yeah. with me watch them. So. The Welland Vesuvius Warlords, yeah. greatest name in lacrosse going right now as far as I can that's a beauty, I like that one. Do you know what, and I, and I think I, I just looked at it the other day, I think that's a company. Oh, I guess a, I guess a Vesuvius is a it's a sponsor. Oh, that is, oh yeah, it is. Yeah. I think it's probably yeah. a pizza place or something. I, I, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah. Great name. Yeah. It. Oh, for sure. So, anyways, yeah, we're going to be there. We're going to be there all day. Um, nine o'clock in the morning it starts. The last game is over at nine o'clock at night. So, uh, it'll be a fairly long day, but uh, mm -hmm. we're going to bring the lacrosse action to people across the world. And uh, I know the teams have started to promote it on on their behalf. We're putting it on our site. It's on the fan forum. So let's see how many people are interested in junior B lacrosse. Yeah, great. So we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to recap last week's games in the NLL, and then in the second half, we'll uh, we'll make our picks for this week. And I guess I'll give you a couple of minutes here to go on and and gloat again because you had a pretty successful week last week. I did at that. Two games, both going into overtime, mm -hmm. where we co both could have gone two and zero, oh, but of course you went two and zero, oh, and I went zero oh and two. Toronto beating Boston in overtime, and and who would have? Well, who other than you would have picked it? Rochester beating Buffalo in overtime. Well, you know, I, th I was just thinking about that on the way over here to the arena, because uh, I had a little incident at work this afternoon, that fear is a terrific motivator. <laughs> and I do believe that's going to come into play in a lot of these games yep. uh, down the stretch in the National Lacrosse League, because it's do or die, especially starting on Saturday night at the Air Canada Centre when the Rochester Nighthawks uh, fly in to meet my baby rock. Yep. Well, I guess fear being a motivator, I guess you know, Honey, you better do the dishes or else, <laughs> right? I mean, it's the same sort of thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, do, you know, I, was, I watched a couple of those games last week on the uh, on the internet. Uh, what a great week for lacrosse last week. Um, I mean, Calgary Edmonton, that game there, that was a little bit of a, a blowout. <laughs> yeah, ten to one, the end of the first quarter. Oh, yeah, and then I watched I watched part of that, and I just couldn't watch it anymore. I, I don't know. Well, Calgary was running on all cylinders. Edmonton just did not show up. Um, Colorado though goes into San Jose and, and uh, come out of there with the win. It looks like maybe Colorado's back on track. I, yeah. know, I was questioning them there for a while. Yeah. What's going on? And San Jose, I guess maybe that's the team though, because both those teams. I remember saying yeah, last week both those teams were not playing really consistent, and it was almost a coin flip. I took the home team. You took Colorado, and yeah. another win for you. You know, pride, pride as well. Gary comes into play as well, not just fear when it comes down to this time of the year. And uh, you, you and I both know Gavin Pro real well and Gene Ash. These guys are real class acts and they're used to winning. They hate losing. Just talking about Gene Ash there, there were an absolute ton of rumors that mm. he was coming to Toronto. Yeah. Um, nothing, ultimately nothing happened with that. Uh, I mean, he's still on the shelf. As far as I know, Leishon's still playing 
uh, pretty yeah. much everything there. He played the All-Star game. Well, him. what I heard up at the last Rock game was that Curtis Palador was a loner and that uh, he was going to go back with a couple of Rock players to Colorado in exchange for Gene Nash and an unnamed player and or cash or future right. considerations, right. whatever. Well, it turns out that G didn't pass the physical oh. and uh, the deal was quashed. Palador goes back to Colorado and then just the other day, the yeah. trade deadline, it may yeah. have been premature here talking about no, the, that's fine. the, yeah. the, uh, the, the uh, deadline. Uh, Chugger Dietrich comes to join his favorite coach, Jamie Batley, and the rest of the Laker uh, coach and crew that's now in charge of the Rock. And he's going to back up Bob Watson, or who knows, they may rotate them on game by game basis. And, and you know what? That's what I was going to ask you. What do you do there? I don't know. I mean, you know, D Dietrich's a favorite. I mean, Dietrich's a fan yeah. favorite. He's still a good quality NLL goalie. Uh, what do you do? I mean, I don't think you bring him in just to sit on the bench, do you? I don't think they'll start him tomorrow night for some reason, it being a home game and it says Watson's. Saturday night. Uh, pardon me, Saturday night. Uh, <clears throat> it's a home game for the Rock. I don't think they're going to start him. But don't be surprised if things don't go the way the Rock want early on that you see Chugger between yeah. the pipes. Yeah, yeah and I guess, uh, I guess I will say, I mean, and no disrespect to Mike Atwood um, or, or even Palador for that matter, I, I guess they would have a little bit more confidence throwing Dietrich in there if he was on the bench as opposed to who they've had in the past. Yeah, if yeah, I know what you mean. Things get going a little bit rough. So, last game of last weekend, though, just before we end off this part of the segment, uh, Minnesota at Philly. <clears throat> that was one of the games, I think it's the only game you got wrong. You took Philly. Yeah. Uh, and I took Minnesota. And, and it looks like, I made the comment, I remember last week, that Minnesota looked like they were maybe getting back on track, going 2-0 and the week before, going into Philly last week, and, and again, a real squeaker. I think that was a one-goal game, 13-12 or 12-11 yes. or something like that. Uh, yeah. And as you said, going into last week, without Jeff Schneider, yeah. um, Philly, <laughs> they still put up a heck of a game, but uh, you know, one goal win there for Minnesota. Well, I didn't see it, but in all reports, Ethan Iannucci is uh, returning oh, to form. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. dude, dude's incredible, yeah. man. Like, yeah. uh, watch out if he gets uh, healthier by the week. Yeah. Well, Philly, can hang, Philly can hang in and yeah. uh, maintain a, yeah. a playoff position. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what, he's one of those guys, that, uh, that's a team there that they rely so much on him early in the year. I mean, they, they played well early in the year, but they struggled. Um, when he comes back, though, yeah, totally I'm different sure. team. And uh, other report, too, I read a little rumor as well, is that even though Schneider does have a fractured voice box or whatever it is, it's not as bad as early reported. He may be back in the next two to three weeks as well. So. Okay, right. That's your major face-off guy in the league. Yeah, what, yeah. What a guy to lose. Yeah. So, and as we said, I mean, going forward now, it's starting to get, we're in week 11. Going into week 11 this coming week, it's starting to get crunch time. Yeah. Teams have to win, and uh, this is where you really find out who the contenders are going to be and who the pretenders are going to be. Yeah, it's an exciting time in the NLL. That's definitely yeah. sure. So we're going to take a couple-minute break here. We're going to wrap this part up and uh, come back with our picks for next week and a little bit more discussion.